History, a topic we've all learnt about in school. The Assassin's Creed series is full of history, whether that be historical locations, historical figures and even historical events. You may even make an argument that history in the Assassin's Creed games teach you more than school itself. But regardless of the whole debate, what I want to do in this video is go over my top 10 favourite historical events in Assassin's Creed. Of course this video will not include every historical event in the games, but just the ones I personally like the most. This is a video I've always wanted to make because history is something I'm always fascinated with. So yeah, with that said, let's just get right into it. Okay, so I want to start off with something that isn't exactly considered to be as traditionally important as the other 9 historical events I talk about in this video, but I had to include this one just because of how famous and iconic it is, and that is Leonardo da Vinci's drawing of the Mona Lisa. I don't think the Mona Lisa painting really needs an introduction. It probably is, or if not it is, the most famous painting in human history, alongside the likes of the Starry Night, the Last Supper and even the screen painting, all of which are as iconic as the Mona Lisa. It's of course created by the brilliant mind of Leonardo da Vinci, a real life polymath that was a painter, scientist, sculptor and just an overall genius. And his character in Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood is definitely a top 2 side characters in the entire series. Now what's pretty cool is that during the events of Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, you can actually be able to see the Mona Lisa in its work in progress date. So during a mission named A Roll of the Dice in the Da Vinci Disappearance DLC, which first let me tell you is a must play, during a casual catch up between Ezio and Leonardo, Ezio mentions the ongoing creation of the soon to be iconic Mona Lisa drawing. What I like about this is that we get to see a fictional representation of it being in the process of being created. Now a lot of people may not know the Assassin's Creed lore behind the painting and not the real life version. Well did you know that Ezio once shared a romantic connection with Lisa del Giocondo, who is of course the real life inspiration for the Mona Lisa. Now when I first heard that, I wasn't even shocked knowing how much of a stud Ezio was, and of course Ubisoft had to fit an Ezio romance somewhere in the lore. So yeah, it's pretty cool to know that we're able to get a sneak peek into the brilliance of Da Vinci's imaginative journey, as well as the historical backdrop that surrounds the iconic Mona Lisa painting. However, just like I mentioned right at the start, this quote unquote historical event is not as important as the events after in this video, but I just had to include it, at least in the number 10 spot, because it definitely deserves its spotlight. Now moving on, let's go into the first actual historical event of importance in this video, which is a historical event that takes place during the story of Assassin's Creed Unity, or rather before it, and that historical event is the storming of the Bastille. So on July 14th, 1789, the storming of the Bastille took place. If you're not aware as to what it actually is, the angry citizens of Paris forcefully entered and seized the notorious Bastille prison, which in real life history is seen as a powerful symbol of monarchist oppression in France. It was constructed initially during the Hundred Years War, and by the late 18th century it evolved into a facility for imprisoning upper class rebels and a symbol of royal power. And then on July 14, 1789, the crowd of Bastille demanded the release of prisoners and the surrender of stored weapons that they had. Of course this led to a pretty violent confrontation, which then led to the surrender of the Bastille. You see while it was believed that the Bastille prison contained numerous political prisoners, there were only 7 inmates imprisoned. In Assassin's Creed lore, among them were Pierre Bellic, who we of course know in Assassin's Creed Unity who was a member of the French Brotherhood of Assassins. Of course Pierre Bellic is not a real historical figure so that's one fictional character. And also our beloved main protagonist Arno Dorian. Of course Arno was also a fictional character. While the Bastille met its destruction at the hands of revolutionaries shortly before we actually get to play Assassin's Creed Unity, it's still a very important part of how the game showcases revolutionary Paris. The storming of the Bastille is just one of the few historical events that were portrayed in Assassin's Creed Unity. Sadly I can't say the story of Assassin's Creed Unity lived up to the hype of how interesting and cool the French Revolution looked during the game, but nonetheless, the storming of the Bastille is one of my favourite historical events in Assassin's Creed, so for that reason it deserves a spot in the top 10. Assassin's Creed 3 is one of those Assassin's Creed games that probably has the most historical representation, whether it's the portrayal of the Native American tribes, figures like George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Paul Revere and so on, and even the real life historical events in Assassin's Creed 3. Now one of those events I want to focus on in this video is the Boston Massacre, an event that I'd like to think is quite widely known, especially if you study history at school, or perhaps you're currently learning about it now. I for one definitely learned a lot about the Boston Massacre back when I was in school, but sadly I can only remember a few parts of it. The Boston Massacre, or as it's known to us British people as the Incident on King Street, happened on March 5th 1770. 
It consisted of British soldiers and American colonists engaging in some pretty violent acts to each other. So to explain it in simple terms, the British soldiers fired on the crowd, leading to the deaths of 5 colonists and quite a lot of injuries. Remember those numbers I just said, 5 deaths and a lot of injuries? You'll see why in a bit. In Assassin's Creed terms, the Boston Massacre was showcased when the colonial right of the Templar Order, which consisted of members like Haytham Kenway, Charles Lee, Thomas Hickey, William Johnston and so on, were aiming to escalate tensions for their own gain, which is of course typical Templar behaviour, and they did exactly that. During one scene, Charles Lee fired his pistol into the air just to provoke the soldiers. And whilst all the chaos was going on, those guards that got provoked panicked and started firing into the crowd, resulting in the deaths of five individuals, and also quite a lot of injuries in the crowd, which is of course what the events of the real life Boston Massacre consisted of. Of course, during Assassin's Creed 3, Patriot propaganda quickly jumped on the incident, framing it as a deliberate massacre and turning it into a very important event of the American Revolution. For Connor Kenway, who of course we know is the main protagonist in Assassin's Creed 3, the Boston Massacre was his first experience with social stealth, and he was immediately identified as a suspect by Hazem Kenway. We pretty much escaped the city to try not to get caught, and that is how the Boston Massacre was portrayed in Assassin's Creed 3. Of course, for historical reasons, it's definitely not 100% accurate, which is to be expected, but regardless, the way it's showcased in the game is definitely worth mentioning, and I like the way Ubisoft represented it, especially specifying that 5 people were killed and there were a lot. through the city of Athens, which at the same time was under siege by Sparta during the Peloponnesian War. Over the next three years, the majority of the population fell victim to the mysterious plague, resulting in an estimated 75,000 to 100,000 deaths, which was around 25% of the entire city population. Still to this day, nobody exactly knows what the plague was or how everybody suddenly died. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, you can actually witness the grim reality of the plague's onslaught. You see, normally the city is lively and busy during the game, filled with citizens, soldiers and merchants. You'd often hear children playing, dogs barking and people talking. However, when Cassandra arrives during the quest called Abandoned by the Gods, the city has dramatically changed. The streets are suddenly empty, devoid of life and scattered with piles of plague victims all covered around with sheets. A nice little detail that Ubisoft added was when you witness this, your screen changes colour to a grey filter. The game also showcases how the Athenian leader Pericles died where his heart was slowly deteriorating because of the plague. However, Assassin's Creed Odyssey had its own spin on it where Demas pretty much killed Pericles, whereas the real life Pericles fell victim to the plague. It's pretty crazy that even Assassin's Creed leaves unresolved a significant historical event such as the Plague of Athens. I've always appreciated how the Assassin's Creed series allows you to immerse yourself in its historical events, but this particular one felt especially impactful because when I replayed Assassin's Creed Odyssey earlier, it's during the Covid lockdown and it's kind of similar. Of course, not the Plague of Athens level of similar, but you know what I mean. The mystery of the plague is still Still unknown. Some people speculate that it could be the Black Death, and there's even theories out there that range from measles to Ebola, but nobody truly knows. historical events. We've got events like the Bonfire of Vanities, which a lot of people don't actually know is a real historical event. Of course, Ezio isn't real, so don't start thinking he suddenly spawns out of nowhere and starts giving a speech. But the one pretty interesting historical event that I want to talk about is the Patsy Conspiracy, a very, 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 very brutal historical event that I'm kind of surprised was included in Assassin's Creed 2. So pretty much the Patsy Conspiracy stands out as one of the most infamous events in Italian history.
ruthless sea terrorist, but a master of branding. He pretty much mastered the intimidation factor and created this image about him so fearsome that even his enemies would rather surrender than confront him. Despite his terrifying persona, he was in reality a democratic leader who treated his captives quite humanely. However, this doesn't exactly paint him as a hero. The trailer for Assassin's Creed Black Flag where it shows him exaggerating Edward Kenway's fearsomeness is more of an ultimate badass power fantasy. You see, when he met his death at the hands of pirate hunters in 1718, Blackbeard endured 5 gunshot wounds and approximately 20 cuts before actually going down. Legend has it that his headless corpse circled the ship several times in the water before vanishing. However, that could just be an exaggeration. In Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Blackbeard confronts Captain Woods Rogers and the British Royal Navy in a pretty exciting showdown. Despite enduring numerous injuries, Blackbeard remains defiant until his very last breath. He kind of receives a somewhat heroic death as one of Edward Kenway's allies, staying relatively true to historical events. This intense scene really brings out the feel of pirate stories, putting you right in the action of those iconic sounding sea battles from that time. Now staying on the theme of piracy and Assassin's Creed Black Flag, I've gone with another historical event that occurred during the golden age of piracy and this one is the story of the 1715 Spanish treasure fleet. If you're not aware as to what this historical event is, it's pretty much the mission in Black Flag where we see both Edward Kenway and Adewale imprisoned on the Spanish ship that then becomes a jackdaw. So, the yearly Spanish treasure fleets were groups of Spanish warships departing from the New World ports including Havana in the Caribbean. These ships were loaded with trade goods like gold, silver and jewels all coming from South American colonies such as Peru and these fleets were destined for Spain's ports in Cadiz and Seville. The vulnerability of the treasure fleets was evident in their susceptibility to tropical storms. Hurricanes proved disastrous for several fleets including those in 1622, 1715, 1733 and even 1750 leading to a lot of gold rials spilled in the ocean. In Assassin's Creed Black Flag on July 13, 1715, a fleet commanded by Captain General Don Juan Esteban de Ubilla set sail from Havana. I definitely butchered that name by the way. Anyway, just 6 days into their journey, the treasure fleet encountered a fierce hurricane that devastated 11 of its 12 vessels. The lone survivor was a brig named El Dorado which of course was taken over by Edward Kenway and Adewale during their escape from captivity aboard one of the fleet's sister ships. After their escape, Edward claimed El Dorado as his own, renaming it to the Jackdaw. And then later on, Edward revisited the wreckage site for a diving expedition. The remnants of the treasure fleet remain among the world's most valuable shipwrecks, even after centuries. I'm sure by now it's pretty evident that Assassin's Creed 3 has a lot of historical events. I mentioned one earlier in this video being the Boston Massacre. But there's another historical event that really caught my eye and I do quite enjoy the way it's portrayed in Assassin's Creed 3 and that is the Boston Tea Party. First off, what actually is the Boston Tea Party? Because if you're watching this and you don't have a clue, you'd think it's a pretty fun sounding event that consists of a party with tea. Well, not exactly. The Boston Tea Party was a protest on December 16, 1773 in Boston. American colonists were upset with Britain for taxing them without representation. So what did they do? Well, they tossed 342 chests of tea into the harbour. That definitely upset the British, didn't it? This was the first big act of rebellion against the British rule. It signalled to Great Britain that Americans wouldn't accept unfair taxes and tyranny without a fight. In Assassin's Creed 3, this act is also aimed to financially harm the Templars, making it Connor's responsibility to carry and toss the tea into the ocean. So, after discovering Johnson's plan to purchase Kanyan Kahaka land, and Connor met with Samuel Adams to discuss how to disrupt the Templar's finances. Adams proposed the idea of dumping British tea into Boston Harbour to rebel against England. Luckily Connor already had plans to get rid of the tea, so Adams convinced him to join the Sons of Liberty on the raid. Fast forward a little, the Sons of Liberty and Patriot protesters disguised as Kanyan Kehaka warriors approached the wharf. They boarded the three laden ships, dumping all the crates into the harbour. Fast forward just a little, we see Kana about to dump the last crate into the water, locking eyes with William Johnson, Charles Lee and John Pitkin standing at a distance. That scene where he's just staring them down is so badass. So yeah, the Boston Tea Party is a historical event that remains a massive part of Boston's history and marks one of the early successes in the American
Lisbon and led to an estimated 60,000 casualties in Lisbon alone. The strong shaking destroyed many public buildings and around 12,000 homes. The earthquake occurred on All Saints Day, a day when many people were attending mass. Since the churches could not endure the shaking, they pretty much collapsed causing the death or injuries of thousands of worshippers. In Assassin's Creed Rogue however, this is portrayed so differently. It's got an Assassin's Creed twist to it. So pretty much the earthquake happened due to Sheikh Cormac disturbing a seismic temple beneath the Carmel Convent. He was assigned by Achilles Davenport to go after a piece of Eden that was believed to be in the temple. And then following the earthquake, many lost lives and homes, leaving Lisbon completely destroyed. Shea held himself and Achilles responsible for the tragic outcome. And we all know the rest. I won't go too much into it as that's pretty off topic. The whole mission in Assassin's Creed Rogue was definitely my favourite mission in the entire game and I'm sure a lot of your guys' favourite mission too. Just the whole city coming down whilst you're trying to escape from a literal earthquake was so